In this video, we'll see about expanding V principle or endose V principle and endlose counterpart principle. These are the two concepts which were put forward by Enlo. And these topics comes under growth and development in orthorhombics. So first seeing about Enlo's V principle, most of the bones in the cranial and facial region, the craniofacial bones mostly follow a V-shaped configuration. And according to Enlo, it is said that there will be bone deposition in the inner aspect of the V and there will be bone resorption in the outer aspect. So, the inner aspect or the inner surface of the bone, we call it as endosteal surface and outer surface, we call it as periosteal surface. So, and it is said that the Endosteal surface is lined by osteoblast cells and periosteal surface is lined by osteoclast cells, the bone resorbing cells and thus bone deposition occurs on the inner aspect and bone resorption occurs on the outer aspect. This statement was further proved in an implant study where implants were placed on both periosteal and endosteal surfaces and when they they, it was proven that there was bone resorption occurring in the periosteal surface and there was detachment of the implant in the periosteal surface and whereas in the endosteal surface the implant did not get completely detached due to the expansion and bone deposition occurring on the endosteal surface. So as this bone deposition and resorption occurs what happens is this is the first position. From here the bone de it will continue the bone deposition and resorption will continue and finally the bone will move from this position that is a narrow end of the V to a wider end. From the narrow end, it will move to a wider end with growth and expansion. This is the whole concept of Enlow's wave principle. And this is the most accepted principle whereas Enlow's counterpart principle is one which is not accepted which we will see later. And we have Examples which will show Enlow's V principle. The best example is palate. Palate is one of the best examples showing Enlow's V principle. So this is a rough diagram which I have drawn. First diagram shows that it's a section of an younger child. In an younger child, you can see that palate and nasal floor is close to the infraorbital rib. But as the development happens, there will be descending down of the palate. How it is? happening is so considering the palate is a v-shape there will be bone deposition occurring on the inner aspect so the inner aspect this side is the palatal side and bone resorption on the outer aspect the outer aspect it is towards the nasal surface so that is a nasal side so as this happens there will be from this position it will finally move down it will be descending down that's how palatal growth occurs following the expanding v principle. Next example is mandible. So in mandible when you see in this view that is from my top view we can see the growth of the condyle, the growth of the body of the mandible and ramus of the mandible itself is called cause the expansion of the mandible in a posterior and lateral direction. So from this position it will be expanding and growing in a posterior and lateral direction. So it will move from a narrow end of the V towards a wider position by expansion and growth. This shows expanding V principle in mandible. And this is the diagram which we have already seen in drift and displacement in orthodontics. So this is something which we have seen in primary displacement in, an, in our previous videos. So in primary displacement we saw as the condyle grows upward and backward to maintain contact with the fossa, there will be displacement of the mandible in a downward direction. So, this is the one which is seen here with bones following bone deposition on the inner aspect and resorption on the outer aspect and condyle growing in upward and backward direction, the mandible will be displaced in a downward direction and growth will be taking place. So, this is the example of expanding the principle in palate and mandible it's nothing but bone deposition and resorption occurring 
in a continuous manner the position in the inner aspect and the rotation in the outer aspect finally there will be growth and movement of the bone from a from the narrow end of the v towards the wider end there will be expansion and growth of the bone that is enlos v principle next coming to enlos counterpart principle so what this principle says is growth of any given facial or cranial bone will relate specifically to the other structural and geometric counterparts related to it so what this says is growth of one bone in cranial or facial region will influence growth of another bone the growth of its counterpart and why this happens is to maintain a balance in growth and for a functional equilibrium to be established but this counterpart principle is not accepted and we have some examples of bone and its counterpart the examples are mesomaxillary complex and anterior cranial fossa middle cranial fossa and breadth of ramus that is width of ramus then maxillary and mandibular arches last maxillary tuberosity and lingual tuberosity so this is all about enlos v principle and enlos counterpart principle thank you see you again in another video